If you'd like to email me, you can do that very simply. Just tap in jb at bbc.co.uk. Fax number is Belfast, double three eight oh four eight. As her folks drive away, her dad yells, check the oil. Mom stares out the window and says, I'm leaving my girl. She said it didn't seem like I that long ago. When she stood there. And with the sound of the Dixie Tricks ringing mellifluously in your ears. Time for me to say bye-bye. And it's time to say hello to Jerry Anderson. Well, hello. Good morning. Uh, good morning, John in Belfast. Thank you, uh, Susan McGrann is up here in BBC Oil in the northwest, where the rain is colder. It's Monday morning. If you want to contact this programme, there's no reason at all why you shouldn't because a bank of telephonotes, telephonotes and tele- people on the telephone await your every utterance. The number to ring if you want to contact them and indeed make contact and indeed perhaps maybe make a new friend is 08459 555678 and I mean that most sincerely folks 08459 555678 the ghost of Huey Green walks the earth if you want to send me an email it's jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk here's a song which I played on this programme a couple of weeks ago it's by Lucy Kaplansky it's called Written on the Back of His Hand I kind of like this and so do many people although they don't tell me that they usually insult me you don't have any secrets when you come into the world like a book and the pages get filled The leaves keep turning on every single page They write their story with marks on your face Marks on your face Locked in your head an unbreakable code A secret never spoken is a story never told Gonna show you the back of my hand They say you can hide those scars But they hurt you every day They hurt you every day
very fine song. It's a very fine album. That's um, uh, Lucy Kaplansky. Sorry, I just forgot her name there. I forgot my own name one day. One morning in this program about three or four weeks ago, you, know, you open up and you say, good morning, my name is... I couldn't remember what it was. I worried about that. I went to the doctor. He said it was only a temporary lapse. That uh, He asked me what my name was. I was able to tell him. He said, there, you're all right now. That's called Written in the Back of His Hand, Lucy Kaplansky. It's a song called That, and it's from an album called Every Single Day, and it's excellent. Um, Fine, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Tuff, Jordy. I'm just checking in to see what's happening next door. It's very important to know that uh, what's going on is what we want to go on. It's very difficult for me to know that, you know... Uh, hello? He probably will be phoning in today. He probably will, yeah. Well, we can phone him, you see. That's how we, we usually phone him. People. Who's it from? That's probably a woman looking for Geordie's telephone number. We get that all the time. I think it's important when we start the programme to get a feel of what the people are thinking. That's why I'm eavesdropping. Sorry about that. Yes? Do you want a baseball cap? You see, this is the type of important thing that we're dealing with. You see, you may not realise this, but there are people all over Northern Ireland who are just waiting for this programme to start so that you can ring and ask for a baseball cap. Well, well you could ask. Why don't you ask Jordy? The next time Jordy's talking... I say to Jordy the next time he's talking to Jerry to get ask Jerry for a baseball cap. You see, what they're looking for is a Jordy Tuft baseball cap. BBC don't supply those. I have my own baseball caps, but I ran out of them some time ago. They were called the Jerry Anderson Fan Club baseball caps. But they were proved too expensive and the BBC withdrew the line. But apparently there's been some independent operator controlling and indeed uh, approaching Geordie. So obviously Geordie has got a line of baseball caps, hence the interest showed inside. Let's just rejoin this. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask, I'll ask Jerry on your behalf from Christine. To, do you want Jerry? No, wait a minute now. You want Je no, you see, you want Jordy to ask Jerry, so we're cutting Jordy out of this, are we? You see, what we do is we usually cut out the middleman in, in transactions of uh, monetary value. I note that the girl's name is Christine, obviously female. I would imagine that she doesn't want a baseball cap at all. She just wants Jordy's phone number, so you can phone up, so she'll go to his house, sit, give him whiskey, and let him look at her legs. Yes. Yeah. Aye, uh, okay. Yeah. Ball in the hinch. Right. Uh, that explains a lot. A lot goes on in Balna Hinch. You see, we know a lot from what the people tell us about where they're from. If that had been six mile across, it would have been a different story. Yes, two. Who's the two? For Alistair. Right. Notice Mr. Coyle is starting to sigh already. He's tired. It is only 22 minutes to 11 o'clock, another hour and a half to go, and he already is browned off with the listeners. That's this is the type of thing I have to fight here. If it wasn't for me, this programme would go down the tubes completely. I'm the only one who can show any kind of enthusiasm. I'd. Hello to Jordy, Jordy, Jordy Tuft. You see, notice how bored Coyle is. Okay, the early morning phone caller. Okay. Um. He sang again. People are badgering his ear. No, you're at, Jordy's like a rooster, okay. Ah, well, he is indeed in many ways, but we don't like to talk about this in this programme because there may be children listening. I'll do that. He's, he's like a rooster. He's up early in the morning. Oh, that's what I meant to say. All right, yes, not, okay. Not, not the other thing. And hello to Anne. Hello to okay. Well, I don't know. Well, 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 I'll ring him and tell him. He won't, of course. That's what's called the lie. The false promise made in the morning when someone rings up and says, will you contact this person? They say, yes, we will, but we never do. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes? Are you finished with her? Yes, that was Christine. I noticed that. But I, mean, I was commenting on your pro on your pro the progress of that call there. I hope the people didn't mind. It's a new technique I've used. It's what's called... It's a fly-on-the-wall documentary approach. Uh, what goes on behind the scenes. I noticed that you're tired already. Yes. <laughs> Talking to people. You're tired you already. A baseball cap. I, 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 could you fill me in on that? What baseball cap do they want? She, anyone at all. You, mean, you, you said Hugo there? You told me about Hugo baseball cap? No, I didn't you say You said... You did. She wanted a baseball. Oh, sorry. Shh, shh, shh. She, she wanted, wanted a baseball, a baseball camp. But well, why? Why does she think that Jordy would have one? Uh, I, 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 well, I don't know. I gathered that she wanted you to ask Jordy for she a wanted, baseball. She, no, she wanted y you, me, to ask Jordy for a baseball camp. Yes. Why on earth would I do a thing like that? Because she wants to give it to someone. But why did she just go out and buy one? But why does she want me to ask? Well, she a wanted a Radio Ulster one. Oh, I see. But mm. so why would Jordy have one? She, 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 he has nothing belonging to us. Because we don't give him anything. Mm. Did you have a nice weekend? Yes. I so had I. <laughs> I've got another letter here from the High Commissioner of Nigeria. What it, about your boat? What boat? Oh, the dragon boats. I'm worried about that. Have you had any further communication? I'm, I'm afraid to bring this further in case it turns out to be a damp squib. I've been, fo I've been phoning Hendy this morning, but we can't find yeah. them. Can't, See, is it, because, is it because the money required to raise is too high? 
Or is the distance too long? I think it's a combination of two of the factors. I think we need to get this clear before we do anything more about it. You have three people in the boat. Three people in a boat? Yeah. Three men in a boat. I've read that. You have three. I don't know what to say to that, except maybe we should leave that until tomorrow. Or unless you have a private conversation with the people involved. Uh, I'm disappointed at the response from the general public. I feel as if they're not interested. And, you know, I'm saddened by that, Sean, I have to be honest with you. Because, you know... The sterling work that the firemen have done over the years, and indeed the... Uh, it's got nothing to do with it. I know, but just go, I'm using that as an example of, you know, oh. what can be done, Sean. Yes. And I look out around me and I see the ordinary people, many of whom are sound of limb, who will not row our boat and are afraid to commit themselves to raise a 500 pounds. I think it's too much. I think it's too much. And I don't know what to do about it except to say that I'm deeply saddened. Anyway, the uh, High Commissioner of Nigeria writes to me, was I telling you about that? No. Could you turn me off, please? I will, of course. It's a you. pleasure. He says, I write to you after proper consideration that a telephone correspondence may not be an ideal medium to contact you in this matter. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Agogo Mustafa, a senior accountant with the Office of the Honourable Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, headed by my boss, the Governor, Mr. Joseph Sanusi. I got your contact through a secret inquiry I made from your country's Chamber of Commerce. Though, during my inquiry, I did not make my intention known to him so that it would remain confidential to be explicit recently in the course of an in-depth verification exercise instituted, I made a discovery that prompted this private communication whilst conducting our usual verification exercise before we authorized our overseas correspondence in the United States stroke Europe to effect payment to our deserving contractors. That sounds like something out of Glen Gall Street, doesn't it? We discovered that one of our deserving beneficiaries, a Mr. John Ebanks, whose payment has been approved and was to benefit from this quarter's payment, died some time ago after a brief illness. Presently, all effort to locate any of his benefactors had proved abortive, as they no longer reside at their former home office address. I didn't know anybody lived in the home office. Consequently, I thought it just a place where people went to work. Consequently, I am soliciting for your hand and collaborate. He wants to marry me? No, I'm, I'm spoken for. I'm, I belong to someone else. I can't be yours. It's only a dream. It's Consequently, I'm soliciting for your hand. In other words, well, well, if, if you're going to give me money, that's a different matter. I'm soliciting for your hand in collaboration to divert these funds already with our offshore correspondence. Now, as you probably realise, this is complete gibberish. This is a person who doesn't speak English, who has read a few books. All I require of you is to accept to assist me, since I am not a foreigner, and as such cannot stand as one of the benefactors of the last... Of the late Mr. Ebanks, who of course died after a short illness. And these people no longer live in the Home Office. Upon my receipt of your letter of intent, I will immediately alter every information in the payment file with an affidavit, together with my colleagues and position of office, to instate you as the subcontractor and the benefactor to the payment of American dollars, thirty-two million dollars. Which he thanks. That means that I don't have to worry about how I get money from Mallorca next year. Already approved for payment in our offshore payment centre. Already I have commenced on transferring all rights to your name in favour of your company. Yes, the BBC. Thank you. They'll appreciate that. BBC need, need more money to make more blue planets and to give to Jim Davidson. In anticipation of your favourable reply, you and I will discuss the mode of sharing this money after I receive your positive response. Finally, after proper and perfected documentation, I shall send you the payment release code. You need the payment release code. I... I wouldn't know where I am without the payment release code to enable you to receive the payment. I will point out that you will be required to prepare for a trip to the point of payment to receive these funds in our favour. We would have a delegate on standby to assist you in every way to guarantee complete success. Note that this transaction is 100% risk-free. Hence, we are here to perfect the entire process. This is a lifetime opportunity before us and we would not like to see it go by. I am sincerely counting on your support to make this possible. I await your urgent response. Yours sincerely, Agogo Mustafa. Alternative fax number so and so and so and so. Note, if I receive your confirmation to go on, the entire transaction will last for seven working days. You indeed may get a letter like this. If you do, throw it in the back of the fire because the next letter you get when you contact the people will be, all we need is the number of your bank account. Then you'll, you'll, send, you'll send them the number of your bank account in anticipation of getting 32 million quid and then you'll discover that a small amount of money has disappeared from your bank account and no one knows where it has gone to. Hello? Jack's looking for you. Is he really? What does yes. he want? Well, he, he's got, I think, a wee 
I don't know what he wants. I, I do know what he wants, but I don't know. You're very pale today. Yes. Have you checked your heart? Yeah. You heard what happened to Gerald Houllier at the weekend. Aye, but I don't manage Liverpool. Just as well. Yeah. But you were yeah. watching it on television, weren't you? No. Were you watching a football match on television? No, I didn't see any football at all. That's why you're weekend. pale. Yeah. That's why you're pale. You just be careful. Okay. Did you take your stuff today? I did, yes. It's the main <laughs> thing. Look after yourself. You know how hurt I'd be if you dropped dead. Yeah. Jack. Who, who's Jack who? Jack Charlton? No, Jack... Straw? Smallwood, I think. Jack, <laughs> Jack Smallwood. That's oh, different. I, I don't know. It's Jack. Oh, Jack, yeah. I think. Maybe I've got the Jack? show anymore. It's Jack. Jack. My name is Jack and I live in the back of the Greater Garber home for nature. What's birth. that all about? My name is Jack hmm. and I live in the Greater Garber home for wayward boys and girls. Yes. Um, I don't know what it's about. It's a long time ago. Don't bug me. Right. One. It's about... Yes, one. Good morning, Jack. Morning, Jerry. Jack, what a fine, loud tone of voice you have. I am... Well, I'm 90 years of age, Jerry, so I'm going to have to make an effort. Exactly. <laughs> Tell you what it is. Yes? It's, it's, I'm a member of the local golf club here, and there's a crowd of the old, old ages go round, you know, and there's a four ball there, and we have a heck of a good fun. Excuse anyway, me a second, uh... This story... Well, excuse me, what was that last... A four ball there, and it heckled a good... What, what is that? We have a lot of good fun, you know. Oh, sorry, yes. Heckling and one another and... Oh, heckling. Mm-hmm. That's not a good word. Heckle is a good word. I haven't heard the word heckle for a long time. Ah, uh, well, I, my age, I, I retain some of these. Some no, of them you, I forget, of course. There's a lot of words that are disappearing. I mean, yeah. The word, you don't hear the word heckle. Too oh, much. well. Uh, People don't heckle each other. Well, they used to, but they do it in a d- different way now, Jerry. It's banter now, isn't More it? More sophisticated now. They're still a heckle. Hey, when was I can't remember the last time a man heckled me. Of course, I don't be on stage that much. You don't um, be. No, I don't, no. I, people heckle me, you know. Oh, I can understand. I listen to you quite often, too, and I can understand that. I don't I would, I, You're not in the position, but I would heckle back a couple of times. All right, then heckle away. What have you got to okay, say Okay, I'll tell you what. Yeah. It's this jump I play golf with, Stanley, and Stanley re- keeps humming and singing this song day after day, you know. Mm. And uh, it, it was really, a, I'll give the background to it. This chap has gone off to Australia, and he leaves his best friend, Jack, that's me, to look after his girlfriend, whom he loves. And Jack, he does the dirty, and and, he, and, and the guy loses his girlfriend, Jack, you see. Mm. One year towards from Australia, the, 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 the verse is, he just knows one verse and another line. I'll give you the verse, please, if I may. Yeah. Give my love to Nelly, Jack, and kiss her once for me. The sweetest girl in all this world, I'm sure you'll say, is she. Treat her kindly, Jack, old pal, and tell her I am well. My parting words were, don't forget to give my love to Nell. <laughs> And I said, now, it was another line which interests me too. He, he just got one, one, one verse of this. Go he ahead. says, we chanced to meet upon the street. And then I said, oh, that's all he knows. That's, that sounds good, then. I thought so. I said, I wish you Jerry could help me here in this one. Has it got a bit of an air to it? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, give oh, yeah. my old Nelly Jack. And this one, he can sing it. I can't. Yeah, well, that's you're doing okay there. <laughs> That sounds like a good one. Uh, I thought so too. I'm sure some people out there will know what that is. I hope they do, Jack. Uh-huh. Well, is is he the same age as you? Oh no, he's about twenty years younger than me. I'm the top of the lo- I was ninety there uh, last Thursday. And how many holes do you do? You do eighteen? Do you do? Oh nine? no, I do uh, thirteen. Thirteen? Why thirteen? Thirteen Tuesday and Thursday. You finish the clubhouse Thursday. It make only smell the bar there. You see. <laughs> Thirteenth, <laughs> thirteenth. Uh, I don't know. Was it? Let me just check. Was it thirteen T hole fairway? What do you call them? Thirteenth no, hole. Thirteenth hole. Thirteenth yeah, yeah. hole is near the bar then. Oh, aye, that's right. If any so hole there, you're close to the bar. Actually, so you don't have to go around that whole loop again. Oh no, 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 never. Sometimes they no. couldn't make it. Well, tell me this now. When a man plays thirteen holes, I know nothing about this. Right. And when a man goes into the clubhouse, what's the first thing he drinks? What does he buy? Well, I know what I buy, Jerry. Can I get it from me? Yeah. I'm dedicated to Johnny Walker Black. Oh, good man. And I, they don't have to ask. With my four ball gun, they threw the drinks up to the lads and they always have a Johnny Walker Black without ice and just water. Oh, and I'm, night, I'm still going strong. All right. So, so that's, that's a, good medicine. That's sitting for you when you come in. Absolutely. And do you, do you sip it or do you just throw it down the hatch? Oh, no, no. I just savour it and let it go around the palate oh, and all that stuff. Round your thrapple. <laughs> that's, that's a nice one. I can taste that. That's another word you don't hear much anymore. <laughs> I have to explain that to Junior Crowd. People used to say, uh, how would you like a punch up the thrapper? <laughs> it's a bastardization of the word thrapper. It feels bad already, Jerry. Mm. It's, uh, it, it's a bastardization of the word, I hope you don't mind me using that word, but this is the only word I can think of to explain it, of the word uh, throttle. Throttle as in throat. 
Oh, the yeah. Trapo. Oh, I knew that was the throat, all right, because I, I knew that one. Oh, yes, sorry. But uh, a lot of words don't... Uh, uh, you don't... You, what's, the certain words that you don't hear anymore. I was thinking of those the other day, and I can't think of them anymore. I no. shouldn't have started this, but I, had a, I, I sat down and made a list of them. Yeah, uh, words, what you that's quite I right. I can't think of any of them now. Can you think of any words we don't hear anymore? No, I can't think of any words I that can't you don't think hear. Of any. <laughs> I can't think of any. I a whole thing about that, and suddenly I realised I can't think of any. I well, sat down the other night and I made a list. We'll start we with should have thought about that. I, got I, can't, remember. I can't remember. Um, Stever. Ah, oh, good Stever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you had a good Stever? Oh, my God, I don't know that one. You don't know that one? No. Thank God for that. Mr. Coyle knows. That's why he's yeah. quiet. I know. That's why you're quiet. But ask Jack what, what, what do they call it? Do what you, do you call it? A good stever. Uh, what is it? I don't know what a stever means. A stever is a, a, a kick in the backside. That's what oh. it is. Yeah, it's called a good stever up. Oh, know. I see. Yeah. That's where it hurts most. Indeed, yeah. What would you call that? Oh, I well, uh, it's a family <laughs> family program. <laughs> you don't hear fellas say, "What you?" I'll tell you what you'll find. You, I'll give you a good steamer. Ah, that's right. I know. I'll, yeah. I'll surprise this fellow if he doesn't finish this verse. <laughs> <laughs> People are too polite these days. I'll strike you. Is that what they say now? Yeah. Oh, yes. I'll with the back of my hand. I'll, stri I'll, I'll strike you across the thrapple with the back of my hand. And then I'll give you a steamer. It doesn't, doesn't sound the same, that one. No. <laughs> people can't threaten each other with you. Remember people used to threaten people great? But about, you don't hear, how do you like a bunch of fives? Oh, hey, yes, that's one, yeah. You don't hear that. Up the thrapple. All right, remember the, what was the teddy boy thing? How do you like a, f a mouthful of crap? Uh, rings, maybe. What's the origin of that one? A mouthful of crap. It must be the blue suede shoes. Exactly. Yes. People yeah. just, do, do you remember that, sir? What's your name? What's his That's name? That's Jack. 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 Sorry, Jack. Turn me off and you talk to Jack. I'll talk to Jack. Why are you, what's wrong with you? Because I want to talk to people. <laughs> Different. Ta you talk you to Jack. You want to line them no. up for you, Jack. Do you know what it is? Huh? You're tired of life. Oh, it's the bus run. No, you're tired of... <laughs> what bus run? <laughs> you don't even know. What bus run? You don't know why I'm tired. Why are you tired? You, you don't even know. Tell me why That's you're how tired. how you are. I'm in here in the morning, I'm fresh as days, and you're washed out like an old rag in there. What's wrong yeah. with you? Where did you go at the weekend? I'll tell you later. Tell me now. No, talk tell to Jack. Tell me now. Tell me now in front of Jack. No. Where oh, come go? on. Tell him. Tell me. <laughs> tell me. We had a bus run. We? Who are oh, we? Oh, I see. Who are we? The plant. What plant? Here, the talking shop. The radio foil, bus run. Oh, and Jay, you weren't there, Jay. Blimey. Hold on, hold on. excuse me, Jack. You um, think up and your back. Excuse me, Jack. Uh, what bus run? We had a bus run on Saturday night. Radio foil, bus run. Wh wh why was I not talking? Wh I wasn't invited. <laughs> you wouldn't go. I wasn't asked. Yes, you did. You Who asked me? You, me. You didn't ask me. Yeah, I did, and you said you had something else on. You were going to Carn Lock or someplace. Karen Lock, no, that's Lock Derg. You're going someplace. Did everybody out of here go on the bus run? No. How many went? Me. <laughs> just you. <laughs> where, where, where did I you take it? I represented the shop. Where did you take it? Where did you take the bus? Ballyliffin. Ballyliffin. Cuddy Donegal, of course. Yes. Near the Isle of Doe. Yes. That's explained. I was on the Isle of Doe for the first time yesterday afternoon. It's very handy, isn't it? Very. It saves you falling into the water. Yeah. So, what did you do? Who, who was with you? I, I, I hope this... Uh, Jack, you don't mind this, do you? That's all very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of those other words. Go ahead. See, we're trying... <laughs> you keep thinking, we'll come back to you. No, but I, I hope that people don't think they've been left out of this, but I certainly feel left out of this. I didn't. I, I was not aware that Radio Foil had a bus run on Saturday yes, night. Yes, As a matter of fact, I'm quite hurt at not being invited. I probably I, would have gone on it. I, I think it was discussed on your programme because Sadie Johnson travelled from Belfast to come down to it, and people came from Strabane to go on it. So as far as that, as so, far as so, so out and about, people, people, yes. And how many people were on it? 183. Ooh. <laughs> what, kind of a, what kind of a bus was that? Several buses. Are you serious? Yes. Holy snakes, no. You, are you trying to say that you brought listeners out on Saturday night? Yes. Why? Because they wanted it. They but it's not like you to do a thing that people want. Didn't they take, did take them down? The, didn't they take a boatload of them down the fire? That's different. The people Doesn't don't know matter. about that. And these are people who listen to your wee program. Yes. And where did you take them? To Bally Nothing. What did you do with them? Did you buy them drink? They got a, a meal. They got a meal. Yeah. Who paid for this? They did. Oh. <laughs> so they came. Yeah. To a bus. Yeah. With you. Yes. And went to a small town in County Donegal from yes. a place like Belfast. Mm hmm. And they went and paid for their own meal. Mm -hmm. And how did they get home? Very good. They're home in the bus. That's a bus run. Who paid for the bus? They did. So you didn't pay for anything? I did you pay for anything? No, I paid, I paid my way. 
I paid for my meal. Well, who you paid for your meal? Yeah. Well, who organised it? Me. You organised that people would come from Belfast and get on a bus, go to a small town in Donegal, yeah. have a meal and be brought home with a bus, and they'd pay for everything. Yeah. Why would they do a thing like that? Because they wanted a wee night out. It's a good organiser. Yes, they wanted a night out. And then, and oh, I'll tell you who else came. I'll tell you who was, do you know who the guest was? Who? Jerry who? Kelly. Oh. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't oh. know. Jerry Kelly was the guest. Why was I not told about any of this? As a matter of fact, we might be talking to Mr Kelly about it. And well, smiling I, on the oh, well, you'd need to talk to him about it. I know nothing about it. I do. It was done behind my back. It wasn't done behind it your was. back. You said you were going someplace and you couldn't. You couldn't make it. This was done behind my back. This is this is this is treason. This will go to the highest level. Mm -hmm. This is misuse of BBC facilities and phones. This is use of the BBC logo. Misuse of it. I wasn't told. And Kelly was up. Sure, Kelly's busy fighting with Pat Kenny. He Kelly, had no time for that kind of stuff. Kelly was up at the with his golf club. Oh, he wasn't up specially. But we, he, I phoned him and I oh, told you him. You phoned him. Yes. Oh, and what, did, did he ask for me? He asked where you going. And what did you say? I says, no, he's going to Karen Lock or something. You liar. You liar. You're lying to Kelly. You lying, lying, swine. Where were you at the weekend? None of your business. There you are. I'm going to turn you off okay, now. Thank There'll you. be more about this. This isn't <laughs> over. Jack, I'm sorry about this. Oh, dear, 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 dear. This come as a great surprise to me. Jack, we'll get that song for you, okay? I have to load. Go now, I'm, I'm upset. can, there. I'm upset, okay. Send out the tentacles there. I'll send out the tentacles. Okay. All right then, Jack. Take care. Bye. Bye. Something's wrong. I can't it's on LP with Ch Chet Atkins and Les Paul. Can't you know, go on. Treachery. The radiators blow. Silent shapes in the dashboard light. Alone in the space, silhouettes in flight. Something's wrong. We don't see eye to eye. Take so long to understand just why. Evacuate, the engine has caught fire. It's not too late to save our precious lives. Something's wrong. Something's wrong.
That's The Walls. That's a song called Something's Wrong. Uh, the Walls from Dublin, right? That's all we have time for. We'll be back after the news. It's 11 o'clock. 92 to 95 FM. And 1341 medium wave. BBC Radio Ulster. This is the news with Linda Ray. Britain's chief medical officer, Professor Liam Donaldson, has tried to allay concerns about the possibility of an anthrax attack. He stressed there was no evidence of an immediate threat, but antibiotics had been ordered in case of an outbreak. The number of people in the United States who either have anthrax or have been exposed to it has risen to 12. Here's the BBC's health correspondent, Chris Hogg. Professor Donaldson is trying to play down the risk of any biological attack here while assuring people that extra measures have been put in place to deal with any incident. He said the government had been drawing up contingency plans for the last year and a half. The chief medical officer confirmed that efforts continued to secure and store supplies of the appropriate antibiotics. If there was an outbreak of anthrax here, there would be systems in place to ensure the drugs could be moved to the affected area quickly, he said. And family doctors have been contacted to remind them how to access the latest advice on diagnosing the disease. The American-led raids on Afghanistan are continuing. There have been reports of a cruise missile attack on Kabul airport. Witnesses say they saw three large explosions inside the airport compound. Unconfirmed reports from Taliban sources say 12 people were killed in a raid in the northwestern town of Bad Geese. The American Secretary of State Colin Powell is due to arrive in Pakistan later today. He's expected to discuss the ongoing raids on Afghanistan. From Islamabad, Susanna Price reports. The details of the American Secretary of State's visit to Pakistan are being kept secret for security reasons. However, it's clear he'll be discussing the continuing attacks on Afghanistan with Pakistan's President, General Pervez Musharraf. Pakistan has pledged full cooperation for the American-backed alliance, specifically in the areas of logistics, military intelligence and the use of airspace. General Musharraf has said he hopes the attacks will be limited in duration, and this may be one area he'll want to discuss with Colin Powell. General Musharraf may also try to reassure the Americans that the religious extremists who've been organising almost daily pro-Taliban rallies are in a minority. A member of the militant Palestinian group Hamas has been killed in an explosion in the West Bank town of Nablus. Israeli forces killed a Hamas leader yesterday but they haven't commented on the latest incident. Judges at a preliminary hearing in the appeal of one of the men convicted of the Lockerbie bombing have rejected an attempt by one of the victim's relatives to take part. Marina de la Ricaccia wanted the court to hear evidence not brought before the original trial, but she was told there was no provision in Scottish law for her to speak. Three people escaped injury in a shooting incident in Craig Avon early this morning. Two shots, thought to have come from a shotgun, were fired at the back of a house at Legahori Court in Craig Avon around two o'clock. Two men and a woman were in the house at the time. The police have appealed for information. The South Antrim Ulster Unionist MP David Burnside has rejected criticism of his decision to have private talks with the UDA leadership. Mr Burnside said the meeting took place at the end of the summer following a period of violence in his constituency. He said it was his duty to try to stop violence from loyalist paramilitaries. The weather wet at first, becoming drier and brighter later. BBC Radio Ulster News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. On the rail network, there are delays of up to 20 minutes on the Portadown Larne line. On the roads, traffic controls are in place on the A5 Victoria Road, and that's between Macramason and new buildings. Road resurfacing continues in the area and expect some delay. Controls are also in force on Huntley Road in Banbridge. There may be delays due to installation work, which is taking place until the beginning of November. Roy Willigan with the Travel News. Uh, thank you, Roy. Welcome back. Sorry, thank you, whoever it was. Welcome back. <laughs> BBC Radio Foil and BBC Radio Ulster with Jerry <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. It's uh, almost five minutes past eleven o'clock. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is oh eight four five nine five 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 six seven eight. I have to say congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Toyle. It looks like uh, who are celebrating their wedding anniversary. That's slow from all their friends. Uh, these are just some requests who have come in, and I, I'm good at reading them. Uh, hello to Sinead McAvoy of uh, Loch Brickland. A happy birthday to her. That's from her aunt Gemma in Newcastle and uh, Tony the Parrot. 
Right. Pirates listen to this program on a regular basis. Sean and Warren Point wants me to play a song called Mary by the Four of Us. Good idea. Haven't played that for a while. And where can I get Mickey McConnell CDs on the internet? Well, I spent the weekend... Well, not that I didn't spend the weekend with Mickey McConnell. I, was, I saw Mickey McConnell quite often over the weekend in Donegal. Uh, he's got, uh, Mickey McConnell's got a website. I think it's www.mickeymcconnell.com. Uh, do we know what that is? Uh, oh, God. Dot com. I'm not quite sure what it is. I have a little piece of paper there, but I haven't got it with me, with his uh, website address. I'm sorry about that. Uh, lost a black and white collie Springer crossbreed on the 5th of October in the Tunbridge area. And the Tunbridge area is no place for a dog to be walking around on a company, I have to tell you that. And uh, a lady rang me this morning. Uh, she said she lost her dog last night. It's one year old. It's a cross between a Labrador and a Rottweiler. And it's not vicious, and it's a very calm and nice, uh, good-natured dog, even though... Uh, a person would hesitate before you approached a Rottweiler, I suppose. A Rottweiler, I don't know what you call them. Anyway, it's a one-year-old Labrador stroke um, cross uh, Rottweiler. It was uh, lost in a place uh, with a beautiful name I've never heard it before, called Bunny Before. Have you ever heard of a place called Bunny Before? No. Did, well, there's another word a lady phoned in to remind you of... Like a stever? No. Uh, what? I had you dig in the cooter. Dig in the cooter. Yeah. You don't hear people being called... Or a big... Uh, dig, uh, dig in the bake. Dig in the cutter. Dig in the cutter. Cutter. You don't hear cutter any. I haven't heard cutter for a long time. No. Do people still juke round the corner? But you, I just used that the other morning. You pulled me up about it. I pulled you up about it, yeah, and I intend to do it again. I'm very upset. There's a you're, man who was on, on your you're boat. You're behaving very secretly. I, I can't believe you did that at the weekend. You took away people on a bus run? It's a wee program. People who listen to the Wii program. But Jerry Kelly was involved. I should know about I this know. stuff. Yeah. Once you involve glittering celebrities, I automatically... I'm involved. I just feel as if you've been doing this behind my back. A man approached me. I was talking to a gentleman and I told him what was happening. Like what? They told him about the bus run going to Ballyliffin. And he says, do you know who will be there? Jerry Kelly will be there. Why don't you give him a ring? Well, he plays golf up there. I know and that. And I phoned Mr. Kelly and I said, Jerry, oh, we're And he says... You lick. You, you sly swine. You phoned a man at his golf club. And I bet you said, I did not. you bet you said, my name is John Coy Sean Coyle from the Jerry Anderson program. I bet you said that. I phoned him to his house. Oh, even worse. And what did you say to him? I said, Jerry, are you for Bally at the weekend? He says, I am. I said, so will I. He says, uh, all right. He said, and he said, did he say, will Jerry be there? He said, are you oh, playing? Did he say, will Jerry be there? No, he said to me, are you playing golf? And I says, no. I said, are you staying over? And I said, ah, yes. And we discussed things. Oh, you stayed over? Oh, yes. Oh, all the people went home and you stayed over? A, lo a lot of people stayed over. Stayed where? In the, either in the Bally, in the Strand Hotel or indeed in You the, stayed in a hotel? Or indeed in bed and breakfast. You stayed in a hotel? Yes. Who paid for it? I did. You paid? Yes. For yourself to stay in a hotel? Yes. I've never seen you doing that before. Uh. Why have you done... This is a big step for you. You paid your own bill? Yeah. What? I, this makes no sense. This I'm, is totally out of character. Why it's have you done this? There's something behind this. No. I better ring Kelly after this program. I think there's something going on here that I need to know about. You went, you brought listeners whom you can't stand normally. You brought them on a bus on a weekend that you regard as being your time off. You brought them to a hotel in Donegal. You fed them. You entertained them. You talked to them all night. You invited Jerry Kelly along. Yes. Then you stayed in the hotel that night and paid the bill yourself. Yes. That makes no sense in any direction. <laughs> There's something going right. Is anything to do with the war? <laughs> is this is this, is, is this connected with the no, war? Were these Arabians or don't, Palestinians? What were they? There's a man on on one wants to come on your boat. He's got five hundred pound. Paul, on one. Last night, a Labrador stroke Rottweiler, one year old, only a pup, you was lost it? in. A, I didn't finish reading it. It was lost in a place called Bunny Before in uh, Carrick Fergus, which is a lovely name for a place. I've never heard that before. It's wearing a black collar, and its name is Kaiser. Kaiser. If you see that wee dog, it's absolutely, completely harmless and a very people-friendly little dog. And uh, the lady who lost it misses it very much indeed. And we've got a phone number, so if you see that wee dog, have a look for it, run about Carrick Fergus. A wee Rottweiler. It's kind of black. Or is it? No, it's got a black collar. What did she say? It was, what, what color is it? No, I think it's kind of more like a Labrador than a Rottweiler. I think it's Labrador color. <laughs> Paul, I don't trust you. I don't <laughs> trust you. The, when you told me you paid your own hotel bill, that's when I realised there's something very badly wrong with this. And, <laughs> and once I, I hear, and I'm Kelly, not claiming back. You know, I'm not even. Claiming I know, sir. I mean, you I'm can't not, claim it back. That's back. lost money. Yes, that's money that you'll never see again. <laughs> no. And what, the hotel must have been nearly twenty quid. <laughs> no. I mean, if, where? Uh, what, much was it? 
Uh, Probably uh, 70 pods. Uh, How much? I don't know. My wife paid us. But, I mean, it was your money. Yeah. How did you st- How did you sleep? <laughs> Knowing that you had to pay for the bed you were lying in and you couldn't get it back. And Kelly, what was Kelly doing there? I, I There's something going on here. Is... Is this anything to do with children in need? No. Is no. it any? There's something dirty behind all he this. He likes me. He doesn't like you. He told me. No, there's something dirty going on here. I don't like it. I only find this out today. Mm-hmm. I'm going to find out more about this. All by right. thunder, if it well, kills Paul's me. Well, Paul's there now. Hello, Paul. Hello, Jay. Paul, I believe you're interested in coming on our Chinese dragon boat. Yes, yes, I will. I mean, I have got the um, sponsorship more or less got it up. Just a few, few odds and ends to tie up. Have you? Yes. Okay, then. Well, you're on. He's really got your coat up this morning, hasn't he? Yes, I don't like this. Oh, no, I'm stuck in the middle of the Glen Chain Path and it's empty now as I haven't. What? Uh, yeah, it's raining. I, I can see out the window it's raining very heavily indeed. Yeah, it is. I'm on my way to Donegal. Funny enough. Indeed. You're going to Donegal? Where are you going? I go by past Bally I think there'll be a lot of uh, trouble around there after he's been there for the weekend. I think there's a lot of people stranded there. I think there is. I'm afraid of running the bus load of them here. A lot of people hitchhiking home. <laughs> uh, may I say this to you? What kind of physical condition are you in? Uh, not too bad. You're okay? I'm okay. Now, it strikes me... I have about, about 80 bags of flour on the back of the handball off, so I'm not too bad. That's all right, you're in constant physical activity. Yes. Uh, may I say this to you? I was a little alarmed the other day when I was told the route of the dragon boats because it seemed to me to be slightly long. Do you know what I mean? How long? Well, it seemed long to me. I can put an outboard motor on, nobody would notice. Now, there's an idea. Now, there you go. There's I'm an idea. I'm class from Hugo. Hugo won't... Won't be able to deal with that one. No, he won't. Hugo will have all his friends on. See, I, I have a problem because I don't have any friends. Ah, you do, Jerry. No, I don't. Nobody they're likes right, me. They're reaching out. They just can't hear them yet. Okay, then. Okay, well, you're on. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'll, I have to make an effort today to find out what the actual length of the trip is. I think you should phone Jerry Kelly. I think his help's needed. I wonder would he go on the boat. I think he would. Get Coyle to phone him there. No. He's been in contact... Oh, he's with upset, then. Oh, he's, he's upset. I can hear it in your voice. He's been sleeping with... Uh, sorry, he's been staying with Jerry Kelly all weekend. Oh, I know. Anyway... Well, you know what? That's going to have to be for disaster, that one. I don't like the sound of any of that. No. I'm not happy with it, after. have to be I honest. I wonder Lanahan's head didn't raise up somewhere there. May McFetridge? Mm, my golf's concerned, you know what he's like. Well, whenever there's a golf club... May he's is probably not... listening, and I'm looking his help. Right, Okay. <laughs> Whenever there's a golf club, Bay is never far behind. Never far behind. All right, well, thank you, sir. What we, 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 can we include yes, you? Yes, he has my number. Sean has my number there. All right, then. Thank you very much, Okay, sir. Jerry. We look forward to meeting you. Okay, good luck. Bye. Cheers. Good luck. Bye. Well, you see, this is one. I'm not... Uh, I, I, need, I need more detail. I'm a little worried about some of the things that are happening around me. And uh, this Chinese dragon boat just seems to me to be another thing that, you know, may turn into something ugly. But I'll find out more about that. We'll discuss this in greater length tomorrow. Hello, good morning. Hello, uh, Jack. What up, Jerry? Yes, Jerry. Yeah, it? there's a song uh, that Jack wanted to hear. That's right. Give my love to Nell. Yes. Do you know what it was? Yep. Here goes. Three years ago, old Jack and Joe took across the phone. Each found a fortune he was made before returning home. Short years, Jack gained his love, and he set sail away. I'll fade it out on that. That's good. You're a man. I, I, do you know what I'm going to tell you? You're what? a man who knows how show business works. Yep. You knew, you knew when to take that off. Uh-huh. You knew that that was enough. <laughs> Many people, I wasn't sure about the volume. No, 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 no. You're absolutely right. Many people live and listen, listen to this program who would play me a thing like that would play it to the very end. Yep. But you've got the showbiz news to know that that was enough. Absolutely right, Jack. That's good. Would you do me a favour? Yeah. You wouldn't consider putting out in a week cassette. Could you do that? Put it on a CD for you. A CD? Yeah. Well, um, would you? Yep. Uh, would you mind? No. You're obviously a man who's well set up technologically. Cut the computer. Oh, oh well, good man. Would you mind? And I'll, I'll pass that on to Jack. Yeah. I'll t- do you want to know what it is? Yes, what is it? It's a LP called Chester and Lefter. Chester and Lester? Chet Atkins and Les Paul. Oh, great. Oh, I was a big fan of Les Paul. That's super, super LP. And Chet Atkins. Chester and Lester. I think I'm, in the back of my mind, that sounds vaguely familiar. All right, then. Well, excellent. So there we are. We've, uh, we've solved that one. 
thank you very much indeed, sir. And if you would send that to me, I'd appreciate it greatly. And then I can send it to uh, Pat in whichever form he desires. I think his name was Jack, actually. Jack. His name is Jack, and he lives in the back of the home for the Wayward, home boys, for and wayward girls. boys and Girls. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Okay. See you later. Thank All the best, Jack. Thank Bye. you. Do you know, that uh, reaction uh, confirms to me that... Uh, Humanity is basically good, even in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Even with all the troubles that surround us and the fact that the war is raging, mm -hmm. it just goes to show you that within some people's hearts beats a heart of gold within that exterior. <laughs> within that exterior. <laughs> there's, there's a lady, Do you ever start something you have no idea uh, what you're talking about? There's a lady about? who needs your help, or maybe possibly needs George. I'm beginning to look at you in a completely different light. Um... I never thought you'd go behind my back and get a celebrity. I never thought you would be capable of that. Is I didn't it, think you would do it, because I wouldn't do it to you. Imagine so if I went around the back of your back. Imagine if I went around your back and... He's lost his big belly. Pardon? Kelly. Kelly belly? Is, the, the Kelly, Kelly belly's, belly's gone. The Kelly belly's gone. The Kelly belly's gone. Mm -hmm. Which you don't know because he's sitting down all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. The Kelly belly's gone. I don't think I would like him. Is he straight up and down? He is a big straight up and down man, and he's looking great. What do you mean he's looking great? He's looking good. He's looking very healthy. Healthy? Yeah. He never looked healthy before. Well, he's looking... Is he, is he tanned or anything? Or? He is. He's tanned? Uh-huh. What's, what's he playing at? Golf. But you, look what it does to you. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily make people healthy. It makes you... There's a hard. person on here that needs, I think, Geordie's help. Hello? Hello? I believe you need some help. I do, surely. Do you have a belly? No. I'm just checking. Sorry. Carry on. Jerry. This guy gave me three red-eared terrapins last night. Pardon? Three red-eared terrapins. Red-eared terrapins? Yes. Sorry, I didn't think I heard that correctly, but no, then I realised I, I, that's what I heard. Red-eared ter as opposed to the blue-eared terrapin? Yes. Yes. Right, what do I do with them? Throw them over your head, that's what I used to do. <laughs> Whenever my daughter used to bring in turbans, she'd just throw them over the fence into the, the, the garden next door. No, 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 don't do that because that's cruel. I'll tell you what to do. Love them. Love them. I want advice of you. Well, love and cherish them as if... Do you don't know what a terrapin is? No. no. A terrapin is a small... Is it a mouse? No, it's, it's a... not small. Oh, a... then we... we, and we... Oh, Tortoises or turtles. Oh, yes. Ah, I saw. I saw. Ah, oh, right. I saw. They were very popular one They time. were indeed at one stage. Yeah. Even though I used to throw mine over the hedge and the neighbour used to say, any more of those coming? <laughs> That's how right. popular they were. So what do you... What's, what's your problem? I don't know what to do with them. Now, the size of a brave large tortoise. Oh, the big, big terrapins, yeah. Well, why don't you just uh, go down... Well, where do you live? Uh, you Island McGee. Island McGee? Yeah. Do you have a pet shop there? No. Well, where's the nearest pet shop? They don't keep them things. So ring up a pet shop and ask them what to do. They'll tell you what to feed it. I, I remember... Uh, no, I better not say anything in case it's wrong. I, th I think they're vegetarians. No, they're not. Are they not? No, they eat meat. Well, give them live mice. No. <laughs> Would you ask your you get your listeners to see if any I can tell, find out? I can tell you're upset. Anybody knows anything I can tell, about them? I Does can Jordy tell. know anything about them? I would say not. He'll, he'll pretend he knows, but he doesn't. Right. Uh, I can tell that you're worried about them. Oh, yeah. How long have you had them now? Um, since last night? Since last night, 8 o'clock last night. And have you given them anything to eat yet? Yes. And what have they eaten? I've given them a burger. Burgers? With, yes. with or without onions? Without. Uh, tomato sauce? No. Oh, did you hold the mayo? No. <laughs> <laughs> and did they seem to enjoy that? Yeah. I thought terrapins were vegetarians, you know, just goes to show you how much I know. I seem to remember my wee terrapins eating lettuce all the time, which is probably why they died. Did you keep yours in a fish tank? Um, no, I kept them in the bottom of the fridge. <laughs> Maybe that's why they died, because they got it very hard. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what to do. I, if I was you, I'd suggest... Uh, maybe listeners will ring in. Right. And they'll tell us what to do. But in the meantime, if you don't hear anything from the listeners, why don't you just ring a vet? Them, sh they're all in the yellow pages. I see them there all the time. Just ask them. They won't mind. Right. Ask a vet or a pet shop and ask them uh, what, what, what the terrapin should eat and what they should drink. I would imagine maybe Guinness or, or water. I don't know. Uh, but we'll, we'll ask the listeners out there anyway. Right, you then, find yeah. out if anybody knows anything. And they're, they're green-eared terrapins. They're red-eared. Oh, sorry, red-eared. I thought they were Irish. They red stripes down their face. Little, have they? Mm -hmm. That's handy for Halloween, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. Save you the bother of putting it on. <laughs> they, they can just go out and pretend to be ordinary terrapins, whereas in fact, in fact, 
we know they're striped. Right. Anyway, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, your husband's in the background there. What yes, is he, what he is does in he the think? background. There's what actually two here in the background listening. You have two husbands? Yes. No, what are, what are not your, two husbands, no. What are you, a Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Two husbands in the background. Uh, one one divorced. One, husband. The, current, one current and one ex. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right then. No, I sorry. I, I don't mean you're Jehovah's Witnesses. Mormon? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we'll find find out what a what a green eared or a red eared purple eared uh, red eared terrapin eats. Right. All right. Okay. Okay. What? Right. Hold on a Feed second. Feeded liver. What? A lady saying here. What? Feeded liver. A liver. Wee slither of leather. L- leather. Sl- what do you call a it? Sliver liver. A sliver of liver? A sliver of liver. Hello? Right. Uh, the lady says, feed the sliver of liver. Well, what else do you do with them? Does that lady want them? Ah, uh, uh-huh, you see, this is a different story. You want rid of them. Yeah. Don't you? Well, why didn't you say it in the first place? Because I wanted to know what kind of things they were first. They are the tortoise family. Uh, they are, uh, they have four legs, uh, a carapace, and an ugly beak. Right. And a tail that sometimes you don't see. I don't think you know anything about these. Yeah, every once in a while, when the world gets too much for them, they retreat within their shell, as indeed many of us do. Right. I know nothing about terrapins. I'm just bluffing here. Mm-hmm. I gathered that. We have learnt that what? If she phones City Reptiles. City in Reptiles? Yes. <laughs> what, is that a firm of solicitors? I don't know. <laughs> City Reptiles <laughs> in Hope Street in Belfast and ask for <laughs> Bill, and Bill will tell you all you need to know. My boy Bill. Mm-hmm. He's a straight. Will Bill, will he, like a... Uh, yes. City Reptiles... Solicitors, ring them and ask for Bill. I've actually spoke to them this morning. Did you speak to Bill though? I don't know. Go back and speak to Bill. Because right. now that Bill knows this is celebrity driven, he'll tell you everything that you need to know. Sometimes people couldn't be bothered with you. Were they nice to you? They were very, yes. Yeah. Well, there you are. I shouldn't have asked that really because I know they would be nice. Well, ring them back and ask Bill. What did they say to you first of all when you talked to him this morning? Maybe well, that's where he rang up because he realizes you were talking to you this morning. No, he said there's only about three people in Northern Ireland kept them. Well, he turned me off. Yuck, shut up. Yes? Sorry? He said there's about three people in Northern Ireland kept them, but he didn't know who. Well, who is the person who gave them to you? There's a friend. Oh, a friend? Well, why, what pretext? Uh, and why, why did you accept them? But, well, yeah, I just I accept all sorts of things. Well, do you? <laughs> well, could I have your name and address? Uh, what, what, what other things have you accepted? No, this, this fella that had them, he's gone away for a while. He's had them from the Ruby Tenny things, so... Mm-hmm. He's going away to work. I think he's going to Germany or something to work. So. Well, how long is he going to be away for? Two years. That's quite a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he gave his terrapins to this woman. Yes. And this woman said to you, "Do you want these terrapins?" Yes. And what did you? What no, did she she just actually landed in the yard with them and just said, "There's terrapins for you." There's terrapins for you. Yeah. Well, you see, that's the sort of thing that pe- people don't normally hear. Mm-hmm. So what was your reaction when a woman landed in New York well, and said there's terrapins for you? I was slightly shocked. Well, did you not say, well, hold on a minute, I mightn't want them? Maybe she took off. She took off? Yeah. She was kind of like, maybe, what, did she give birth to them or something? No, she got them in, the, in her brother's flat, you see. Well, why should she give them to you? Look, she brought, I don't know, she's... Why, uh, why and she's just a habit of bringing maybe pups and stuff like that, like... Why didn't she bring them to the woman next door? Why, why does she give them to you? And Does she I give you know. everything she finds? Any animal she finds, <laughs> she brings to you, is that it? Sort of. Well, you're, you're, some, you're some agent, aren't you? <laughs> but you know. What are you, the RSPCA? And there you have, yeah, you're left with terrapins that are too big for, and a man who owns, who owns them be away for two years and the woman who was given them ran away. Well, you see, the fella that owns them, he was wanting her to keep them because he didn't want to get rid of them. And she, she didn't want them? Well, she couldn't. She was scared of them. She's scared of them. Mm-hmm. And I, I bet you're scared of them too. I'm not really scared of them, but they're... Just funny wee things, you know. Do you want... Hold on a second. Uh, yes? Does, does, does that girl want rid of them? I Is think maybe right? perhaps you could rephrase that, Sean. <laughs> now, maybe does, would she like someone else to look after them? That's what you asked. Yes. Do you want rid of them? Mm-hmm. Well, right. we have a man here. Oh, have you? Yeah. A man on the line? No, he's not on the line. There's a man on the line, but he's, he's on about something else. But Geraldine's dealing with a man now who wants them. Geraldine's good at that. Yes. And what is she going to do with him? This man will take them from that girl. Oh, we've got a man to take them from you. Right. Where's he? Oh, you, Where's you he do, from? We don't know. We're waiting for the information. It's Paul. I'm just getting it here now. Near Dungannon. Near Dungannon. Paul from Near Dungannon. Will he come down to the lady? Will he come down? Will he go, will he go down? <laughs> what kind of a system is this? I talk to you and you talk to Jerry. What is this? Because dealing with him. She's talking to him. Well, what? God's sake. Could you not write you a note or something? Um, what's this lady's name? I don't know. She didn't want you. Oh, sorry. Where are you from, love? 
Alan McGee. Alan McGee? Mm hmm. As far as that from Dungan, I haven't a clue. It's a brave bet. It's a brave bet. Fergus. Maybe he'll come to you. Ask him, will he come to her? He's gone. He's gone? He's gone? Yeah. He didn't stay long. Was... But what did he say? Is he gonna, is he gonna he come? He said, he said he wanted them. He'll take them off her hands. Well, did he leave his number? Yes. We'll give him your number. Right. And you can talk to him. And he says he'll take them off your hands. Is that, are you happy enough with that? I'm fine, yeah. Okay, well, you can post them to him. Right. Send them air mail. <laughs> All right, but, but leave a wee hole in the box. Okay. In case the postman wants to look in to see what it is. All right, now don't post them, you can't do that. Now make arrangements with him and he, we'll give you the number. You hang on there and we'll give you the number. All right. All right? That's fine. Okay, well, thank thanks, you. Thanks, Jack. Bye. 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 Will you now talk to Francie? How would you feel if someone came along to you and said, there's terrapins for you? Much the same way as I would feel if someone came along to me and said, there's a friend for you who goes away with 183 people on the bus and Jerry Kelly and doesn't even tell you. That's how you would feel. The same way as I would feel if someone said that to me. Hello? Hello? Look, there's nobody there now. Hello? Hello? Sorry, I, I'm barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Who, who's that? This is Francie in Cookstown. Yes, Francie. Do you want three terrapins? No, no, no. I've no, no, I have no truck with terrapins at all. Well, I'm Thanks. glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, How'd you like a rhino? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be more my size, all right. Yeah. Okay. Are you a big man? <laughs> big chap. All right, then. How big are you? Oh, pretty big. Tall or broad? Both? Uh, uh, I, I, one is as the other. <laughs> yeah, as broad like as tall. You're a bowling ball. I'm a big fat person you don't like, yes. No, no, no. Don't say fat. Say jolly. <laughs> bowling ball. You're, you're a big jolly person. What age are you? Well, I mean, what weight are you? Oh, I don't know. Actually, but mm, 23 stone. 23 stone, that's big enough. You're nearly as big as Fiddle and Tom Cameron. Uh, uh, yeah. And that's... I'm nearly as good in the fiddle. Uh, do you play the fiddle as well? No. <laughs> Well, that's that's one down for fiddling Tom. Anyway, well, what can we do for a man your size? Uh, I, I know you, you, you're not particularly fond of these little cards that come through the post and you, know, you scratch it off, you want a prize. No, I, I, my, my, my mission in life is to make people throw them in the fire. Yes, well, I've got one now, but uh, I, I would always throw them in the fire. But this one came along with the uh, new telephone directories issued by BT. You mean BT or... Colluding with these people? Yes, that's why I, that's I thought I would draw to your attention. It's actually your your telephone directory comes sealed in a you know, little envelope, and this is inside the envelope. So uh, I was thinking people might be more inclined to to phone this one. You know, some of BT's credibility would could be rubbed off in this. Well, let's be careful what we say here. Uh, so well, I, I I have my telephone directory, but I haven't opened it yet because I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> so you say this is inside? Well, you know, it's probably. Let's not assume. Let's well, not assume there's anything on tour going on. Oh, yeah, I haven't phoned it. My, my parents got one as well. We've both got the same symbols. We've, we've both got three tomatoes in our saucepans. Oh, so the two of you. Oh, oh, it's very good to have two, three tomatoes in your saucepan. <laughs> so you've, you've all won. Yes, we well, haven't actually me phoned it. We, we haven't phoned but I, I know some of the prizes. Uh, I'll give you an example. Read well, me out the prizes. Well, there's, there's, there's a £2,000 garden makeover. You're not going to get that. Uh, the dishwasher washing machine. No. A laptop. No. I thought it was a laptop dancer, but it was really a laptop. No, you're There's few, ver a few various ones. There's that three nights in Dubai, which would be... Oh, really? <laughs> they might give you that now, but... I think you might get that. Yeah. Frank, read, read, read them all out to me and I'll tell you what you'll win. Right, go oh, ahead. All right. Uh, cause, uh, you could, you could win three nights in Dubai, you know. Mini Hi-Fi. No. 14-inch TV. No. A bread maker. No. Uh, there's 10 £500 prizes. No. Sony camcorder. No. This is the one I think about to do it. A two hundred pound travel voucher. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the one. Because when you flick it over in the small print, yeah, that's the it one. says the two hundred pound travel voucher is two by one hundred pounds, so uh -huh. it must involve two people, and it is to be redeemed against uh, flights not exceeding ten percent basic cost. So, i.e., you'll get a hundred pound voucher towards a thousand pound at a minimum thousand pound flight. In other words, to use the voucher, you have to go to Mars or somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And back. Oh, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. In I other words, get, in other words uh, what you're talking about is a 10% discount on, on a long-haul flight. Yes, calls cost a pound a minute, uh, and maximum length of calls, 4 minutes, 55 seconds. Mm. So a 10% discount on, on a long-haul flight is what you get anyway. I, probably, I, I if you, wouldn't if you know. Voted, if, if, you, if, you, if you booked early in a travel agent. So I, I, just, I thought, you know, BT, I think, make a considerable amount of profit in a year. 
and to, to my mind, the, the, the somewhat tarnished their reputation by association with this. And well, let's be careful here. The money that they would make from such a thing. Yeah, let's be careful here. Let's be careful. Let's well, not, you know, let's not accuse I'm jumping to conclusions, anything. possibly, but... Well, it's maybe uh, you find it a little surprising. Yes, I thought maybe you would like to get somebody from BT on to explain, you know, why they have included this with them, you know, well, did, did yes, they do well, a quality control check well, on why not? goes out? Why not? Why not? Let's do that because, after all, you know, you're saying that it's a little unusual. Well, get, I, I was thinking, yeah. I, I, had the, I would have the sense not to phone this number, but there might be oh. other people who would say, well, this one might be better than some of the other ones we get all right, then. because it's come along with our telephone directory. Okay, Mr. Coyle. Yes? Uh, will you ask BT if we'd if he'd ask someone to talk to us? Okay. Be are you listening to this? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. What the man is saying is when a man gets his directory, it's wrapped in, in foil, right? Not foil, what do you call that other stuff? Cellophane. And inside Did is one Did you open yours? Pardon? Did you open yours? I never opened it. No, no, no. No, I usually throw it in a bin. Ah, oh, same here. Uh, anyway, no, we better not say that. Well, what's the fact? No, but the man <laughs> is saying that he's surprised... I should to ask you. No, quiet, please. He should ring you and ask you, do you want one? Why no. do they do that? No, it's a public service. No, but... Uh, no, it's not a public service. This should ring no. and ask you, do you want one? Can, you, can I go on here? Uh, what the man is saying is that he's quite surprised to find that within that is a kind of a promotional thing which includes this scratch card, which he, you know, is probably mm -hmm. dodgy prize. I'm not saying there's dodgy, but you know what they, they're like. And he's quite surprised to be, to be associated with that. So why don't we ring whoever's involved in PR and BT and ask him to... Well, well who will I ring? How do I um, go about this? I'll tell you what. Why not, why not ring BT? Right. <laughs> right. But ring the operator Who'd and say... Who do I ask for? The public relations department, for God's sake. In Belfast? Uh, not necessarily. Well, that's what I mean. When I, uh, St when start I there. Start there, start, yeah. Start in Belfast. Start in Belfast and see if anybody will come on and say, you know, why they, why they do this and do they think it's a good idea. Because the man has said he's, he's rather surprised Is the telephone that. directory still printed the same way? Or, you know, remember they had a, a nice telephone directory and then they changed it to a new way. Be careful what you say. No, don't want to ask. They changed it to a new Be style. Careful. You know how easy it is for us to get into trouble. I know, but they changed <laughs> it to a new style. Yeah, and you I can't didn't find like the new style. Yeah. And that's why I don't open it up anymore. I keep an old one. Well, there's as many a thing as not opened yes. up that you'd be better off not opening. I wonder if there's a new one too. Still the same. Uh, that's another topic entirely. What All the right. man wants to know is, uh, should BT be involved in sending those scratch cards along with their things? Right? Why shouldn't they? Oh, well, uh, that the man wants to, uh, to, you should ask them. Because he, he regards it as being, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you get it in the sun, all right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, well, you see, that's a, you see, I think, sir, are you still there, sir? Yeah. I yeah. think it's possibly, you know. Francie. Francie. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think you're probably harking back to the thing, you're probably regarding BT as a, as a kind of a public service. Yeah, something like the BBC. It would have yeah, well, you see, standards. BBC couldn't get involved in that kind of thing. But BT is not a public service, basically. It's a, it's a private company. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, I know that. You know, it's but like this. I mean, when you find one of those in the middle of the sun, you're not surprised. No, doubt. Well, I it's was very surprised thing... if I had a copy of the sun, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, I never get beyond page three. <laughs> but, but see, I, just, uh, I know. I, I, I'm, you're I'm associating not BT with the post office. I'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed to do it, but I'm thinking that like they do make a considerable amount of profit on an annual basis. I would be surprised if the amount of money they get for including this would make much of a dent, much of an impression in that m amount of profit. But to my mind, they'd be losing a, a, a lot much more credibility by including such a thing. So in other words, what you're saying, you don't think it's right that BT should give a scratch card whereby to claim your, your company, claim your prize, you have to ring up and spend quite a lot of money on the phone. Yes, I imagine from, uh, yeah. from the yeah. BT's point of view, it could be yeah. counterproductive because... Okay, well, okay, Mr. Coy, why don't you get someone in BT and ask them and, uh, and put them on to me? It's very and, hard. And ask, tell them what I'm going to ask them. Is it a good idea, do you think, in the, from the public's point of view, for them to do that? That's all. All right, then. That's all. Right. Okay. I mean, what could be simpler? Okay. Uh, do you mind? Do you think you'll have time from <laughs> your other activities? Uh, if you get, uh, I know you've been on the phone with Jerry Kelly all morning, organising <laughs> something else that's nothing to do with me, but maybe perhaps you could find maybe a moment to devote yourself to this programme. I'm up at a show next week. Oh. You, you're what? I'm invited to a show next week. As a, a member of the audience? Or are you on? Are you a member of the audience? No. What are you? A guest? I might be. Are you a guest or not? I might be. We talked about it last night. What did he say? Yeah, it's a conversation two friends what? had over a, over a drink. Two a drunken hotel. friends had. Is he still drinking the big vodkas? Yeah. Is he? Is he? The big large ones? Yeah. yeah. Still shooting them down his neck? Yeah. Right, so what did he say? 
That's what did he say? Conversation. He said either of two things. One, when do you come up to the show next week? Right, which means you're in the audience, and you make it a you make it a a, a, a warm glass of wine after. Or else he said, I want you to appear in the show, Sean. He was interested in something I was talking about. He says, Would you talk about that? Would you discuss that? And I says, I would. You'll be in the audience. No, you will. I won't. Don't be. Don't go. Don't be in the audience. You were I'm in the audience before. Remember, you you clammed up. Yeah. You couldn't talk in the audience. Yeah. You can't talk in the audience because yeah. there's people around you. That's right, it's no good. He's not going to have you in the big chair. With someone else. Who's the other person? A female. Who? It's not you. I know it's not me, I'm not a female. <laughs> who's, who's the other person? I'm not, not saying it. Come on! Saying. I'm not saying it. For God's sake. Saying. No. Are you going to be in the big chair with a female? Yes. This could get you sacked in the BBC, you realise that? Not telling me is the crime. Come on, tell me who is. Is this a singer? No. Is she a girl with big <laughs> chest? Fairly, but depends what you call. Is that like, what she's known for? No. Oh, no. Um, is she a, a glamour puss? No. Is she a charity worker? No. A terrorist? Um, no. What, what is she? Give me a give me a clue. What is she? She's an actress. An actress. Mm -hmm. uh, on a soap? No. Oh, well, uh, ah. Uh, uh, Film actress? Mm -hmm. Film actress. Mm -hmm. um, from here? And television. And television. Yeah, yeah. From the province? Yes. Uh huh. From Derry Stoke, London, Derry? Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, the wee girl out of. Out of think of me, the thing that nobody watches. What do you call the one? No. Glen Row? No. Girl out of Glen Row? No. Uh, Come on, tell me, will you, for God's sake? Tell Roma me. Roma Downey. My Roma? Yes. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're lying through your teeth. I was talking to him about the book. About You're... her book. You're lying through your teeth. Am I? I'm going to play music now. I don't like this. I'll talk to you about this later. You've gone too far this time. Can I go You've now? gone too far this time. <laughs> Francie wants to know, can he go? Can I go Francie now? who? <laughs> oh, sorry, Francie. He sorry, forgets Francie. so quickly. What, what were you talking about? The tab, BT and stuff. Okay, uh, Mr. Coyle, can we get back to this? Yes. Will you ring BT? Yes. If, it's, if you're not too busy, right. organising guests for the Jerry Kelly show, mm -hmm. maybe you could ring BT and ask him if I could talk to him for a moment, do you mind? Okay. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, Francie, that's done. Oh, uh, by the way, I, I like your music policy. D d to play none? No, 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 I, I like the music. You, <laughs> well, I don't like all the music you play, but I like the fact you, you don't opt for the safe, bland <laughs> choices. Take a few risks, play Tom Witts. Good to hear Tom Witts in the morning. Good. Wakes, uh, wakes the province up. <laughs> right, I'm going to play you one now that'll wake the province up. This is, uh, <laughs> this is uh, from uh, Leonard Cohen's new album. Oh, it, excellent. It's, it's called Ten New Songs. This is called In My Secret Life. You Good like man. this? Okay. Cheers, Jerry. Right, That's bye. Great. Bye, mate. Bye. Bye.
it cares if the people live or die. And the dealer wants you thinking that it's either black or white. Thank God it's not that simple. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. That was, um, sorry, a mistake there. That was uh, Leonard Cohen, of course. That's a song called uh, In My Secret Life. That's from his new album uh, called uh, Ten New Songs, which is really good. Sorry about that. Uh, I ruined that for you at the end. That's what's called uh, uh, Impetuous Use of the Fader. Uh, is there someone on the phone here? Yes. Oh, there's not. I don't know. Hello? Good morning. Hello, Hello. Jerry. Sorry about that. There are more than Cohen has secret lives. I would say you might have won yourself. Uh, no, no, but I once had a nickname for Coil the Boil. He has finally ruptured. Yeah, I, I, I think he needs lanced. You, you could go on your holidays, Jerry, mm -hmm. and people could come back and say, Jerry, who? I know. Now, look, I want to warn you about golfers. They are devious, sly, even slicket people. I know all right. about that, and they have no consideration or care or any concern Jerry, for Jerry, I can barely hear you, pet. That's all right. It's just the way this thing works here. Don't worry about that. We can hear you okay. Ah, uh, but then I can't hear what you're saying to me. Can you not hear anything at all? Oh, well, I can hear you better now, yeah. Well, I'm shouting Look, a bit. Jerry, uh, do you remember the days when there was just you yes. and me? Yeah. Right? It was a happy well, day. I think you should go back to that. I think I will, yes, because I've learned now the hard way that uh, sometimes... Holding out a helping hand to someone. Uh, sure he was on the dole. Right. In the gutter. Yes, and you took him in. Exactly. Right, and look what he has done to you. Fed him and clothed him. Now he goes to Jerry Kelly behind my back trying to arrange Jerry interviews. Kelly, you knew the way he has behaved in the past. I know, I, but yes. Kelly has... Uh, you just sat coil now. Kelly, Kelly has disappointed me on so many occasions that I... Yes. I can't... They're countless. Aye, a drunken so Drunken fool. Yes. A man who has no control of his... Eat, eat appetites. I sexual and other ways. Oh, stop I that! Heard. Stop! No, I didn't hear that. Oh, I did. No, that's me you're talking about. Oh uh, no, no. No, Jerry's not no, like not that. Cold, sure cold Jerry has never looked at another woman in his life. Jerry has never looked at another woman in his not life. Not at all. Don't even look at the one he has right, right. now. Jerry, I'm away. <laughs> Get you rid of him by twelve o'clock and let him keep it, his wee program. It'd right? better hear. It'd better hear. And his wee program was the only thing he has left. Thank you for I your support. I am sure it's we. It's we and insignificant. It's we, exactly. Yes. Right, bye-bye. We, we'll stay with you, Jerry. He can't cope with the greatness of a Radio Ulster programme. Not at all. Sure, he's only... Uh, he's only a specimen. He's only a... A lick spittle. A lick... Yes. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> a, a, a sucker up to the... Sucker up to Jerry Kelly. I'm behind your back. Yes. Imagine a whole weekend. I know. You know... I know, and me, me sitting innocently at home. Uh, crocheting. Uh, yes, you... Crocheting for children in need. Weekend. Do you, want to see the, do you want to see the blanket I knit for children in the need? Well, see, is out hobnobbing the golf clubs with clean celebrities. you've done something worthwhile. And I believe, I believe the weather in Donegal the weekend was glorious. 
which is worse. Right, goodbye, it's Jerry. It's a god-awful small affair To the girl with the mousy hair But her mummy is yelling no And her daddy has told her to go But her friend is nowhere to be seen Now she walks through her sunken dream To the seat with the clearest view and she's hooked to the silver screen But the film is a sad thing for For she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eyes of fools And say ask her to focus on Sailors fighting in the dance hall Talk about things that don't date. That's uh, David Bowie. That's a song called Is There Life on Mars? That was done in about 1972. Imagine that. It's still as fresh today as it ever was. It's brilliant. Uh, I have to say hello to Mrs. Pat Feeney. Hello to her from Tony and Cheryl. And also hello to Cyril Marshall in Achnacloy and Trevor Stockdale in Ballygolly. That's from Michelle, Amelia and Esther in Wales. And hello to Eileen Nelson. Happy birthday to her from her seven daughters and five sons and all her family and friends. I sound like a person who's reasonable, don't I? I sound like a person who's normal. I like sounding normal. Makes me feel good. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, who's that? Oh, am I through? You're indeed, yes. You're on the air. Mind your tongue. <laughs> I would need to. Last me, you scum. Sorry, I turned into a pirate there. Uh, the way you, things you are today, you have to be very careful my... what you say, haven't you? Last me, you scum. You shall not loosen my tongue. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, that's good. Sorry, it just sounds as if I don't. Because I'm not listening. I'm listening now. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> what can we do for you today? Well, um, I was just... I heard you saying about knitting a, or crocheting a blanket for children in need. Yes, I think it's the least I can do. All the people <laughs> go out and... Sh well, I'm, I'm just finishing knitting one. 
And how are you getting on? Uh, uh, I'm is just it completed? Oh, it's completed. I'm just doing the edging. Mm -hmm. See, so you have to do an edging. I um, love the edging. <laughs> no, I do because you know it's you know it's finished and you can enjoy it. That's right. Because you know it's only the trimming. Well, unfortunately, you know what I'm feeling you get when you're halfway through a blanket. I know. <laughs> I may have to buy another ball of wool, which oh. I'm not very keen on doing. No, let's not go that far. <laughs> no, that's a step too far. Well, May it says three balls in the pattern, and I have. I bought the three balls, but it looks as if I'm going to have to buy another one to finish it. <laughs> mm hmm Well, I don't know what to say to you, except be careful. I will. Be careful when you buy another ball. Just, mm -hmm. just be careful. Don't buy it unless you absolutely have to. Well, Don't buy it right. unless it's completely necessary. Exactly. Well, what are you trimming it with? Well, you see, uh, it's uh, a knitted one with a little cable pattern, if you've ever heard, mm. uh, in the uh, main part of the blanket. Well, then you have to knit an edging to sew right round the blanket to make it look, you know, complete, to make it look finished. You know, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing quite well with mine. I'm nearly about three quarters of the way through. Crocheting's so <laughs> difficult. Because, uh, you know, other people pay lip service to children in need. I see them on television. You see, they're saying they're doing this and they're doing that. They're actually doing nothing. Do they not do anything? No. Oh, uh, but, terrible. you see, I have been at home this last, oh, uh, six months now. I started this six months ago. It's the size of the, uh, of the runway in Aldergrove. <laughs> well, that should be big enough. I thought so. I thought I'd create a world record. First 100 yards were difficult, but then once I got to the half-mile mark... Well, that's right. I said to myself, this is going okay. Uh-huh. And I'm nearly finished. I should be finished it by November 16th, which I do believe in Well, I mean, that's day. marvellous, isn't What it? I'm trying to do, I'm going to drape it over a ballerina. <laughs> well, I think they could do with it. No, no, to provide some protection for the winter. Yes, exactly. And then when, that, when, that, when I've done that, I'd, I'd move it on to another small town. Yes. Of course, Lovely. the ballerina Bal may become a city by that stage. Oh, They've applied. Well, we may go to somewhere smaller, like, let's let's see. Um, mm, what do you think would be? Think, Lisburn, um, perhaps? Oh, it's too big. Lisburn um, could benefit. Small. Portadown could benefit about, from a canopy. What about, about Portadown? Port no, no, no. Portadown, there's a lot of people standing outside <laughs> in all weathers. Uh, oh, yes. But maybe it possibly could do with a canopy. Well, I think that would be very friendly. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? With... not in the best of... Mm -hmm. Be careful what you say. <laughs> right, what are you going to do with your, your, your blanket, um, need I ask? Pardon? What are you going to do? Well, your uh, well it's for a friend. Are they going to drape it over themselves? Who's had a little boy. Oh, good. You see? Excellent, yeah. And uh, talking about knitting, I promised you a few months ago that <clears throat> I would knit you an iron, swe uh, an iron sweater. I think I do remember that. Well, how, Honestly, how, do you? Uh, I do. How, how oh, is that? Gary, you couldn't remember me now. No, no, I remember odd things. Uh -huh. I'm, not, not saying, I'm not saying that you're odd. I, you I remember, mean I'm odd? No, I just remember <laughs> I have occasional flashes of recollection. Well, you might get it by Christmas. Would you like that? Well, I've, I've never had it by Christmas before, so <laughs> I think maybe perhaps I'm ready. Well, it's always the first time. Well, I, I, what size do you think I am, if I may say well, so? Well, no, I think we worked out 40. <coughs> yeah, 40 is fine for an orange sweater. Of course, I'm not a 40, really. I'm, because um, you like a bit of room in it. I like a bit of slack. Uh -huh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 37, to be honest with you. I'm an in-betweeny. Well, uh, I'm a tight knitter. I'm called a tight knitter, which means I better do a bigger size so that it's not too too tight. I prefer the tight knitters, to be honest with you. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't like anything too loose. You know, I don't like anything rolling around there. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I will uh, look forward to that. Is it in white? Well, didn't you decide cream is, you know, the creamy iron? Yes, I thought it would be a cheek to have the virginal white, so I thought <laughs> I'd go for the creamy. Well, the creamy colour is nice, isn't it? V-necked or round-necked? Uh, Crew-necked. Crew-necked? Mm-hmm. Polar-neck? <laughs> if you like a polo, no, polo no, 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 crew neck is fine. Mm -hmm. Crew neck is... I, now, I, do you like the dropped sleeve or the raglan sleeve? I'm the raglan sleeve is the old-fashioned one. Let me, just che let me just check. Do I prefer the dropped sleeve or the raglan sleeve? I think you'll go for the raglan. Yes. No, no, I differ. Oh, no, I you? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Sean. I think perhaps the dropped sleeve is more suitable for me. Okay, then. I don't know how yes. you thought I'd prefer the raglan. Yes, no, I, the dropped sleeve for me. If you're slim sort of slim person, the drop sleeve can make you look that wee bit broader. Well, that's what we're after. Because the raglan sleeve makes you sort of narrow. We don't want to be any more narrow than we are. Well, I'm glad to find that out because, you see, I go for the raglan sleeve mostly. I go for the dropped sleeve myself, and Millie's another dropped thing too, I prefer. <laughs> so, uh, may I say to you that I'm looking forward tremendously to being present. Why don't you present it to me formally? In what way? I don't know. I'll think of something. You? I'll, yes, a studio? Be, yes, wouldn't that well, be Well, nice? that would be all right. Get your photograph in the paper. Woman gives Anderson sweater. <laughs> well, I'll let you know when it's all done and when on the day that I'm free to go there. Where, where do you live, actually? 
Well, uh, I'm in Belfast. Well, we'll the next time we're in Belfast uh, and round about, we can't have you travelling all the way up here. <laughs> no, oh, I no. would enjoy a day out. No, 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 there's no need for that. No, we will come to you. Really? Uh, right about the time you've got it ready, and we happen to be doing this program, as we occasionally do from Belfast, we'll coordinate our movements. And maybe right. perhaps you'll be able to come into the studio and... And give it to you. ...spend three or four days with me. I, I'll wrap it up in Christmas paper, that'll be all right. right. Okay, <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have a staff photographer present, BBC photographer, <laughs> who took a photograph and you never no, see it again. No, Jerry, a cup of tea will do. Why do they do that, the BBC? They take your photograph and you never see it again. <laughs> Why do they do that? I don't know. Why, do you well, know why they do that? I've never been photographed. Well, well, that's you know right, you've never been photographed even. They photograph me and I never see them again. Well, I wondered if you'd ever thought of taking Chinese lessons. Oh, I haven't thought of it, no, no. Why well, I just thought maybe you could have, you'd have a wee think about it. I'll think about it between now and then. <laughs> Listen, we'll let you know, because we have to go now shortly. I know. Let you well, know. Thanks well, for you, talking to me. Yes, you let me know when the sweater's finished, and we'll coordinate our movement so we can have a, a public presentation. <laughs> in, 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 in front of smelly photographers. I, I'll just leave it in for you. No, 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 no. Contact me when it's ready, okay? <laughs> well, I hope I haven't kept you back now. You have not. I've enjoyed talking to you. Right, bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, bye. She's not... What? Margaret has a complaint about your equipment. Never had one of those before. Well, this is the... There she is. I'm not talking to her about my equipment. It's, it's important. I don't care. It's too late. Have a wee quickie with her. No, I won't. It's important to the BBC. Good planets are hard to find out. Temperate zones and tropic climes are not true currents and thriving seas. And winds blowing through breathing trees and strong ozone. Who is that, do you say? Is she still there? Margaret, yeah, yeah. It's Hello, Margaret. Margaret. What seems to be the trouble? Hello, Margaret? Uh, you saying it's the fault of the BBC, you can't hear you. What, what do you mean? Isn't you it can't time you fix that, whatever it is? What, what every, you... every, every so often, some, including myself, ring you up and you say, Oh, I can hear you, it's all right, but I have to hear you as well. But the only thing is that the people can hear it on the radio. Yeah, but I, I mean, I answered something one day and I afterwards I realised I'd said the complete wrong thing because I hadn't heard you properly. That makes you feel very silly. Okay, well, I'll talk to an engineer about it. Uh, you do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I realise it's a problem because a lot of people who come on here talking to me on the air yes. cannot hear me, but they actually, you can hear both of us on the radio. Yeah, you, do you know what it sounds like now as if you were in a, a tunnel? Well, I am. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll talk to you now. <laughs> You're full of it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I talk right. to you? Bye. 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 You see, I handled that all right. Yeah. Yeah. I can do it when I want to. What's wrong with you? I'm upset, Sean. That's why can the people not hear you? I'm upset. You know why. That's Steve Forbert from an album called Rocking Horse Head. That's a song called Good Planets Are Hard to Find. Steve Forbert, of course, was in the studio with me a while back. I had a rather awkward time with him, actually. No, he was okay, but uh, we had a failure to communicate. I think he thought he was a DJ. And he was quite surprised to find out that he didn't know what I was. Anyway, that's all we have time for today. We'll be back <laughs> tomorrow at the same time, if God spares us any better. Uh, if you want to write to me, write to Jerry Anderson, care of BBC Radio Foil, Derry Stoke, London, Derry. The crazies are coming up now after the news at 12 o'clock. So brace yourself. It's 12 o'clock.